Turns out you don't need to be bitten by a radioactive spider to have spider sense. Did you know you have a spider sense of your own? Welcome to Inner Warrior, where we learn from our modern superhero myths to unleash the inner warrior in you to help you to tell a better life story. What exactly is Spider-Man's spider sense? We often see it used in different ways depending on who is writing Spider-Man. Sometimes it is a prediction of danger, sometimes it's an awareness of what's surrounding him, and other times it's more vague. In Spider-Verse number one, we actually get a more concrete idea of what spider sense is. Apparently, spider sense is tied to the cosmic web of life and destiny that binds space and time. The character Madame Web uses this web of life and destiny to see all possible future outcomes in every reality. All Spider-Men and women across the multiverse access this cosmic force instinctively, which allows them to have a sense of the world around them and future dangers, which sounds an awful lot like intuition. This concept of tapping into a cosmic force for intuition sounds similar to Dr. Carl Jung's view of the collective unconscious. Dr. Carl Jung was a psychiatrist, psychoanalyst, and founder of analytical psychology. His view of the collective unconscious was that it is present at birth, probably stemming from the genetic memory shared by all people from our common ancestors. Jung believed the collective unconscious was the reason for prophetic dreams, innate fears, and also the reason why so many myths and religions share very common archetypes and symbols. We've recently learned that epigenetic changes to DNA based on the lifestyle of individuals can account for changes in their offspring, as in the case of the offspring of Holocaust survivors in a study by the ICANN School of Medicine at Mount Sinai and the James J. Peters Veterans Affairs Medical Center. In the study, it was found that offspring of Holocaust survivors actually had higher chances of developing PTSD and were more vulnerable to stress. And in a study by the University of Michigan Medical School, they also found that some offspring of Holocaust survivors had flashbacks of traumatic experiences that they did not even experience themselves. Although it can't be proven, there are also very intelligent people that believe there is a massive collective force that connects everyone and everything. For example, Max Planck, the theoretical physicist whose discovery of energy quanta landed him a 1918 Nobel Prize in Physics stated, all matter originates and exists only by virtue of a force which brings the particle of an atom to vibration and holds the most minute solar system of the atom together. We must assume behind this force the existence of conscious and intelligent mind. This mind is the matrix of all matter. Then there's David Bohm, a significant theoretical physicist that worked closely with Einstein that states, Relativity and quantum theory agree in that they both imply the need to look on the world as an undivided whole in which parts of the universe, including the observer and his instruments, merge and unite in one totality. And also, Dr. Bernardo Kastrup, who specializes in artificial intelligence and reconfigurable computing, has a PhD in computer engineering from Eindhoven University of Technology and worked at the European Organization for Nuclear Research and Philips Research Laboratories. He believed that there's a very real possibility we are all fragments of a one universal consciousness, a more cosmic version of the collective unconscious. Dr. Kastrup explains in an article he wrote for Scientific American, we know empirically from DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder, that consciousness can give rise to many operationally distinct centers of concurrent experience, each with its own personality and sense of identity. Therefore, if something analogous to DID happens at a universal level, the one universal consciousness could, as a result, give rise to many alters, personalities, with private inner lives like yours and ours. As such, we may all be alters, disassociated personalities of universal consciousness. Moreover, as we've seen earlier, there is something disassociative processes look like in the brain of a patient with DID. So if some form of universal level DID happens, the alters of universal consciousness must also have an extrinsic appearance. We posit that this appearance is life itself. Metabolizing organisms are simply what universal level disassociative processes look like. It's hard to say we'll ever be able to find hard evidence of a cosmic force, seeing as science seems to favor materialism, even though we're finding more reasons to look at consciousness and its effects on the quantum world that makes up our own, even in a macro level, according to scaled up experiments like that of a molecule made up of 2000 atoms occupying two places at the same time. At the very least, we can say that A, we do know that there is evidence of a biological version of the web of life and destiny that gives us memories and DNA changes we can tap into. And B, that there is a possibility that a universal consciousness exists that connects us all in a real cosmic web of life and destiny. So how do we activate our own spider sense? 
First, we have to realize that spider sense is actually intuition. But what is intuition? Intuition is basically your brain unconsciously using experiences and knowledge to find a pattern and predict a future event. We often get gut feelings about things, and more often than not, we actually then use our analytical thinking to come up with reasons why we went with that gut feeling. But truth is that our subconscious mind went ahead and made the decision for us. Actually, our subconscious mind makes decisions up to 10 seconds before we do, according to a study done by John Dylan Haynes, a neuroscientist at the Max Planck Institute for Human Cognitive and Brain Sciences in Leipzig, Germany. So how do we improve our spider sense intuition? According to an article by Valerie Van Mullikam, who has worked on analytical and intuitive thinking research for projects funded by BIAL Foundation grants awarded to Dr. Miguel Farias, your intuition can improve with experience in a subject as it allows more data for your brain to use it in its predictions. So let's say you'd like to improve your spider sense for red flags in relationships. Then you'd have to have a lot of relationships or surround yourself with relationships so your intuition gets better. Or let's say you want to improve your spider sense in the danger of internet scams. Then you just have to surround yourself with internet scam reports and websites that reveal the scams to improve that spider sense. As for spider sense for physical danger, if you are surrounded by physical danger either through training or as your occupation, you'll improve your danger spider sense. Same goes for positive things like opportunities. Surround yourself with opportunities whether in stories, news, or people, and your spider sense will be better tuned to opportunities. So step one is to determine what kind of spider sense you want to improve. Step two is to continually surround yourself with knowledge and experiences in that area so it gets better and better. Step three is to make sure you're not experiencing any bias such as only this kind of person is dangerous or only these kind of websites are legitimate when it comes to your spider sense before following its feeling. Have you ever used your spider sense before? Has it ever gotten you out of a jam? For example, I remember driving with my brother to buy a video game. It was waiting at a red light. When it turned green, I intuitively hesitated to go. And by hesitating, I actually saved us from a car that zoomed past a red light and would have hit us. Instead, it unfortunately hit a car to my right that did drive off during the green light. Let me know your experiences with your spider sense in the comments. Also, have you ever felt like an imposter? Like you can't take on responsibility because you're not worthy or ready for it? Then watch as Falcon in Falcon and the Winter Soldier teaches us how to deal with imposter syndrome by clicking here.